The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 8 News Now or Nexstar Media Group. Welcome to Face Off, where we take on the issues of the day from the left and the right. This is our special year-end Face Off, and so, of course, we have with us Alan Stock of KXNT and Annette Magnus of Battleborn Progress. So, uh, let's uh, start with looking ahead uh, and determine what is going to be the number one issue at the 2019 legislature. I think it's going to be a handful of things. I think you're going to see renewable energy rise to the top. I think that was a hot topic last year. It'll continue to be a hot topic topic this year. I think you see things like education, obviously. I think you see a lot of work being done on education. I think that's probably one of the governor's number one priorities. It's the legislature's number one priority. I think you see them take another crack at health care. That's a really important thing that most of them ran on. So tackling pre-existing conditions, tackling how do we make it a system more like the Affordable Care Act for Nevada. So I think you see a lot of those issues um, come to the forefront for this legislative session, and I'm excited about it. Hmm. Alan, what do you think? I, I don't I actually disagree with what you're I think the number one issue will be edu education. Steve Sislak ran as the education uh, governor, as did his predecessor, uh, <laughs> Sandoval, years before. But I, it's, I think he will focus mostly on yep. that. I, I think right, health care will be issue an, an issue. Uh, renewable, re renewable energy, I think, will be on the plate. Um, I think they'll form uh, committees to explore the idea of, of the whole gun issue. Um, uh, I, th I think they'll, they'll talk about it uh, again, having talked to uh, Steve Sisolak just before the election, uh, they have no idea how to define assault weapons. So mm -hmm. I, they're going to have to go through that whole process. Bump stocks, I mean, that's a no-brainer. Obviously, they're going to ban that. But, but all the other stuff, they're going to have to do some legislative hearings. Not that it'll pass necessarily, but I think a lot will pass that he wants to get done because he's got a, a Democrat legislature behind him. So I, mean, I don't think that uh, there's going to be as much continuity as you've seen like last time around. Yeah. You both mentioned education as, as one of the issues. Sure. Do you think ESAs uh, will come up at all with the with the Democrats in control? Will that come up even <coughs> as a bargaining chip? Well, somebody could bring it up, but, but it's moot. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I mean, it's first of all, it, it is the law, but it's not funded, and you can't expect this legislature or this governor to fund it. I mean, I, that's how I see it. It will not come up, and at least it better not come up. <laughs> and uh, if it does come up, uh, I don't think that it will be a wise decision for it to come up. <laughs> so, um, no, I don't think you see it come up at all, and I think that there will be other opportunities for us to talk about public education and funding public education properly all across the state. And those should be the topics talked about, not ESAs and mm. vouchers. Let me just be clear, on the for the record, I am very much supporter of ESAs, but again, I don't think it's going to come up, not with the legislature and the governor where they're at. Yeah, okay. Um, well, what do you think, uh, the, uh, that, that conversely, those are the things that you think will come up. What do you think is going to be the most important issue that is ignored by the 2019 legislature? That's ignored by them? Yeah. Uh, boy, that's really hard to say. Um, uh, obviously, I would say ESAs because, mm -hmm. I, I, again, I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, but they're going to be looking at, um, I, I think the most important issue they can look at when it comes to education, uh, and, and they've got to do this. I, I know they try to throw a lot of money at it to see what, what they can, how they can give teachers more money and throw spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. But I think what they've got to do is they've got to be able to focus on uh, safety and security in schools. Because I don't care how much money you put into schools, and uh, whether they're good books or, or you give them everybody a computer or whatever you do, if, you, if the schools aren't safe, none of that means anything at all. So I, th they've got to focus on that. I'm hoping that that is one of the main focuses when you talk about education, campus security. Every campus should be 100% secure, elementary all the way through uh, high school, and then even in, into college if we need to. But certainly uh, from 12th grade on down. Yeah. Now, Annette, uh, uh, I, if there's an issue you think is going to be ignored, I'm sure you're going to bring it up So, <laughs> to make sure it's not ignore, ignored. But what do you think, were you, were you to be silent in the next session, what would they ignore? I don't think you see them bring up the concept of having an annual legislature. And I mm -hmm. think it's, an ex it's a concept we do need to start to look at and we do need to start to explore. I do believe we need to professionalize our legislature, and I think it prohibits a lot of people from running that would normally run. I think it prevents us from being able to budget correctly because you cannot budget on a two-year term. 
I think it prevents us from funding education properly and mental health properly and all of these things. And so for me, I think that's actually the next frontier of where this state needs to go as we're kind of growing up and becoming, you know, a more professional state. And look, I know Nevadans don't like government and I, I, I know they want less of it. But I think it's prohibiting us from the legislature truly being able to do the jobs that they're intended to do. And I do think we need an annual session, even if it's a budget session, one se session, and then a full session, the next session like New Mexico does it. I think we need a more professional legislature. I, I would hope that they would ignore that because otherwise <laughs> they would wind up Californicating Nevada and that's something that we don't need to have happen. Uh, the more the legislature is in session, the more money it costs us, the more rules and, and regulations that are uh, that are uh, passed that I think prohibit uh, people and freedoms. And I so the, the, the least amount of government, the absolute better. Hmm. So, uh, so they will not uh, bring that up. You think? I would agree with you. Yeah, but, but for different reasons, obviously. But yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's start looking ahead to uh, to uh, 2019. What do you think is going to be the top political story nationally in 2019? Well, I mean, Michael Cohen's going to jail, so I think we're going to continue to see Donald Trump be on the hot seat about what his ties to Russia are, what happened during the election in 2016. And I think you see that the 2018 election, the midterm election, was in part a referendum on Donald Trump. And so I think you can see you can see the writing on the wall. He is going to be continuing to be held accountable. And I think you see the investigation continue to move forward. And I'm excited about it. I was going to say, Annette, please don't be so morose. <laughs> Cheer up, Annette. Cheer up. Things will get better. <laughs> Alan, what do you think? The biggest story of 2019, what's it going to well, be? Well, it's, it's going to be Donald Trump to a great degree. I mean, Mueller started an investigation to the Russia collusion. There's been none, zero, not one aspect of it at all. It's phony. It's fake. Uh, but, um, you know, they're going to continue doing what they can. You know, Maxine Waters wanted to impeach him the day he was elected not even when he took office. I mean, oh, these folks are out there uh, uh, champing at the bit because they're, they're slobbering wanting to go after Donald Trump as, as red meat. Um, so yeah, Donald Trump will be a big story. I think he puts himself out there as bombastic as he is to be the big story, uh, but I think he will be. I think um, uh, the, the, the wall and, and border security will continue to be an issue, and as long as you have uh, these folks who are these uh, uh, illegal alien migrant caravan people wanting to break into the United States. Just now, they just demanded, uh, they went to the Tijuana Embassy, uh, American Embassy, and they said, uh, uh, we will go back home if you pay each one of us $50,000. That was in the latest news that just came out. Why $50,000? Because we all voted on it. That's what they said. How democratic of them. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, I, I, that's going to be an issue as long as they're trying to, to break in, as long as he's, you know, standing firm at, at the border. I think all of those will be issues. So d domestically, um, I, I think you got Trump, you've got uh, the uh, the issues of the border, and the, uh, another big issue domestically uh, can be all the uh, myriad of people who enter the Democrat primary or want to run for president. Uh, you're going to have a ton of them. Now, you know, you've got basically uh, uh, Hillary and, and, um, and Bernie and, and Biden are the main three. I mean, let's be honest, of, of, all, the peop of all the people, those are the main three to, to look at. And of all, I think Biden is probably the least polarizing. But you're going to have the Avenatti's and all the rest of them jump in uh, to try to, you know, get a piece of the pie. Castro just said he wanted to form a, uh, pre an exploration committee out of Texas. So you're going to have people like that who want to run. That will be a big issue here. N internationally, I think you're going to be looking at what's going to go on with, uh, with Britain and whether or not they're going to be pulling out of the EU and how that fares. Hmm. Um, uh, let, let's take a, let, let's take a, well, first let me ask uh, uh, about the wall. Do you think the wall is going to be a no, big issue? the wall will it's never, not? well, it's an issue in Donald Trump's mind, but it's not a real issue because Alan's right. Donald Trump will continue to promote his racist policies. That's that's a thing that's going to continue to happen. But he doesn't have a House of Representatives that's going to go along with it now. And I think that's a really important thing. And that's what Nancy Pelosi talked about this week. She's not just going to sit back and give Donald Trump whatever he wants. And so I think that's something to be celebrated. And I think that's something that we will expect Nancy Pelosi and the entire Democratic caucus, both in the Senate and the House, to push back against because we should not have a border wall. That's ridiculous. It's not going to work. And number two, these policies that Donald Trump brings up are to rally his base and to energize his base. And it's just red meat for them. And so we need to call it for what it is. It's racism. 
and I'm not going to deal with it, and I hope nobody else does either. Well, it's but not racism because we're, we're trying to keep our borders secure, which we have a right to do they against are against everybody. Well, they're they're secure. We had we arrested uh, I think last week it was 3,300 people trying to break in. 3,300. Uh, Number one. Number two, it was interesting when, when the president sat down with, uh, with Nancy and Chuck, um, it was very interesting that one of the things that came out of that that I caught was that the president admitted, uh, which again, I've said on this program and I had him on my show the day of the election uh, two years ago, was that the, he doesn't plan to build a wall from coast all the way to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, to the Texas uh, area. He doesn't plan to do that. He uses that, you're right, as red meat for his, his base, but he wants border security. He kept reinforcing that with Nancy and Chuck sitting there. He yeah. wants border security, and part of that will be a wall. Well, they've already have walls in some areas, and, and if you're going to reinforce it by having some areas have walls, but you've got other means, uh, border patrol agents, you've got drones, and you've got a lot of other oppor electronic opportunities to be able to monitor the uh, uh, any illegal immigration a at all. So, well, when he said that, Alan, do you think he was he was talking to his base to say, I'm going to stand up against these two evil Democrats who are here in the, in the Oval Office. I'm going to stand up to them. Yeah, right, tell them right to their face, I want the wall, I want border security, or do you think that's something he legitimately cares about? I, uh, uh, we all are, should be concerned about border security, absolutely, whether it's from the south and north or our waterways on either side, we should be concerned about border security. I knew a long time ago, and again, we're going to agree on this, that a wall is not feasible literally, you know, from inch to inch, mile to mile, from the, the Pacific Ocean all the way to the other side of mm -hmm. Texas. It's not going to happen like that. It is a metaphor for border security. Mm -hmm. And he, is, he said that. He didn't use the word metaphor, but he said that, <laughs> in fact, it's a big word for it. But, uh, but, but, yeah, but, 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 really. but, but he did say, <laughs> but he did say that uh, it's border security, and part of that will be, you know, wall and mm -hmm. other means, as I already laid out. So um, it's going to be an issue, though. All right. Well, we will keep an eye on whether or not there's a wall or various other means uh, uh, in 2019. Let's look back now at 2018 and talk about what the biggest story was in, in 2018. What do you think the biggest story? Well, it started out, I mean, if you're going to want to go chronologically, you had the shooting at Parkland High School in, in February, uh, and then a month later you had uh, uh, a lot of kids around the nation walk out for 17 minutes. Uh, in order to protest gun violence, and none of them had any idea what they were talking about when it came to gun violence, because when the, pl the commission on the shooting met after all this occurred, they came out with all these recommendations that we've talked about on the show that I've recommended many, many times. Not one had anything to do with guns. It had to do with something else I brought up earlier, and that is school security. We've got to make sure that our schools are secure. Anything else doesn't matter. And they came up with these recommendations. So that was the first big story. Uh, you, you did have, um, I mean, that was one issue. I'll leave, go with your big issue of the year. We, we got other ones, the midterm election and some others. I was gonna say, I think the midterm election. I think Parkland and other things played into the midterm elections. Mm -hmm. And I think the narrative that was painted throughout the year of accountability on Donald Trump making sure that there's a check and balance there uh, you know with the House of Representatives now I think that's very important and I think what Nevada did was very important at least for our side and so for me looking at progressive issues for 2019 we are set up in a much better way to make sure that those progressive issues move forward and whether it's dealing with gun violence prevention or talking about education in a serious way or looking at ways to improve our economy and jobs I think those are going to be key issues that we look at and work on in 2019. And I think in Nevada, at least, we set ourselves up to really deal with those issues in a progressive way. And I'm very proud of that. Yeah, as far as Nevada goes, you're right. I think that, you know, the big story here obviously was the midterm election and the state uh, uh, going from red to purple to blue. And uh, n not that it couldn't go back to purple or red, but right now, I mean, I don't care what people say on either side of the aisle, it's, it's a blue state right now. And people can say, yeah, but we kind of, I saw some Democrats recently who were saying the last few days, no, we're really purple. Oh, or maybe you may think that, but, you know, I mean, I'm being honest. I, I think it, we went blue, all the uh, offices mm -hmm. except for Barbara Sagafsky and, yeah. and Mark Amity are, uh, you know, they're all Democrat. So, I mean, it's blue. That's how it is. As I've said before, it's an opportunity for Republicans to look to see what we can do to be able to come back in two years. 
and that means focusing on the, uh, the, the, the real issues people are concerned about, not some of the others. I yeah. think the reason you see some Democrats and progressives and whoever saying it's purple is because it still truly is purple. If we let our foot off the gas, if there's any kind of uh, regression in our organizing or that there's a loss of momentum, it could swing back to red. That's a very real thing. And so both parties have to be serious about organizing in the state of Nevada because even though in 2020 we won't have a true top of the ticket, right? We don't have Senate. We'll have some congressional races, but the top of the ticket will be the legislature at that point. And so, and, and obviously the president. And so we need to make sure we're doing what it takes to organize here and continue to keep Nevada relevant for both parties because that is a huge risk down the road for both parties is that Nevada goes back into being irrelevant. And Let me say what you, what I think said there's is, an opportunity here. What you said is important because I, I do agree and, and, I, and I respect what you said uh, in, in that uh, you all have to keep your foot on the pedal and your eyes focused ahead. And that's what you guys do. That's what Democrats have been doing. And again, I have nothing but respect for you for that. And this is something that Republicans have got to learn. And, uh, and we uh, have not done that. And I think that Republicans and conservatives are a little too loosey-goosey after an election. And they're thinking about, well, well, we'll do it down the road. They're not doing it down the road. They're trying to keep their focus on it right now and the gas and the pedal, as you said, and everything else. That's what Republicans have to do as well. So I respect that, and I'm hoping that Republicans, everybody who's listening is a Republican, thinks this is what we've got to do starting right now. We can't wait till uh, after even New Year's Eve. We've got to start right now. Mm. Well, we will see what happens with that and uh, with all these other issues that we've discussed. Uh, we're off for the next couple of weeks, so we will see you. And Alan and Annette need uh, to a little time to rest and recuperate. <laughs> so uh, we will all be back uh, in the new year. But thanks for watching Face Off, as always. And thanks to Alan Stock, KXNT, and Annette Magnus from Battleborn Progress Happy for new being here. Happy New Year. We'll see you then.